Now, next talk is about endocrine dysfunction induced by immune checkpoint inhibitors. For this talk, I would like to invite Dr. Hiroshi Harima, who is a uh, professor in the Department of Endocrinology and Diabetes in uh, Nagoya University Graduate School of Medicine. He is the president of uh, Japan Endocrine Society and Japan Neuroendocrine Society. Welcome, sir. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, I am Hiroshi Arima from Japan. Uh, this is my second talk today. And again, I would like to thank the organizers who uh, gave me a chance to have a talk here. The second talk, the title of my second talk is Endocrine Dysfunction Induced by Immune Checkpoint Inhibitors. This is my COI. Anti-CTLF4, anti-PD1, and anti-PDL1 antibodies are immune checkpoint inhibitors, ICIs, uh, which have been used for treatment of various cancers. These antibodies activate T cells by blocking immune checkpoint molecules, resulting in enhancing anti-tumor effect of T cells. However, once the activation is directed toward self-organ, immune-related adverse events, IRAEs, could occur. And among IRAEs, uh, endocrine IRAEs are known to be frequently induced by ICI treatment. We have been conducting a prospective cohort study in collaboration with many departments in our university hospital to analyze clinical characteristics of endocrine IRAs since November 2015. All patients treated with any ICI in our university hospital have been enrolled in this study. So there is no uh, bias of uh, patient selection. Endocrine function is evaluated at baseline and every six weeks for 48 weeks after the initiation of ICIs by measuring the parameter shown below. After 48 weeks, endocrine function is tested only if clinically needed until the visit stops. This slide shows the number of patients in each ICI treatment. In total, 1,403 patients were registered in this study as of October 4th, uh, 2023. These five disorders are well known as endocrine IRAs, and the Japan Endocrine Society published a clinical guideline for the diagnosis and treatment of endocrine IRAEs in 2019. This slide shows the number of patients of each endocrine IRAE in our hospital. The number of patients with pituitary dysfunction, destructive thyroiditis, and hypothyroidism without prior thyrotoxicosis are 62, 83, and 68, respectively. First, I would talk about pituitary dysfunction induced by immune checkpoint inhibitors. In previous studies, including clinical trials and retrospective studies, the incidence of pituitary IRAE is reported to be about 1% in PD-1 antibodies and 4 to 10% in CTLA-4 antibodies. However, in our prospective study, the incident of pituitary IRAE induced by PD-1 antibody is 3 to 3 to 8.6% and IRA by CTLA-4 antibody is 24%, which are much higher than previous studies. 
So these studies, these data suggest that pituitary IRA is, which could be sometimes lethal because uh, adrenal insufficiency may be overlooked in previous studies. In other words, in daily our clinical practice. As you may know, there are two clinical types of pituitary IRAEs. One is multiple pituitary hormone deficiency, and the other is isolated ACTH deficiency, IAD. First, I will show a case who developed multiple pituitary hormone deficiency induced by PD-1 and CTL-4 antibodies. The patient was a male in his 60s. He was diagnosed as renal cancer and the treatment with nivolumab PD-1 antibody and ipilimumab ctl 4 antibodies was studied. Five days uh, after the third administration, he presented uh, several symptoms, including headache. Uh, this, why I wrote headache in red is this is characteristic of multiple pituitary hormone deficiency, not for IAD. As hyponatremia was detected at a regular checkup, he was hospitalized in an emergency. While there were no abnormal findings in physical examination, blood tests showed eosinophilia and hyponatremia, suggesting adrenal insufficiency. Endocrinological examination showed low levels of HCTH, cortisol, TSH, testosterone, and IGF-1. And CRH loading test showed no response of HCTH and cortisol. TRH showed no response of TSH and impaired response of bracteum. LH-RH tests showed no response of F LH or FSH, and GH racing factor tests showed impaired response of GH. This slide showed pituitary MRI. As you can see here, the pituitary glands was enlarged and enhanced strongly with a contrast agent at the onset. The pituitary shrinked six months later. Based on these results, we diagnosed this patient as multiple pituitary hormone deficiency, a physiological dose 15 mg per day of hydrocortisone was administered, and a few days later, 25 microgram per day of levothyroxine was started. Importantly, ICI was restarted after hormone re replacement. Next, I will show another type of pituitary dysfunction, isolated deficiency by PD-1 antibody. The patient was a female in her 50s. She underwent surgery for malignant melanoma in the occipital region, after which metastasis was detected. While epidemic CTA4 antibody was started, the start the treatment was changed to nivolumab PD-1 antibody. After 10 times nivolumab treatment, general fatigue and nausea appeared. She was hospitalized in, a, in an emergency due to low levels of ACTH and cortisol detected in regular examination of our study. There are no apparent abnormal, abnormalities in physical examination or blood test of hematology and chemistry. So that means if you don't measure the hormones, you never diagnose this patient as adrenal insufficiency. Endocrinological examination showed low levels of HCTH and cortisol. The other hormones were all normal. CRH load, loading tests showed no response of HCTH and cortisol, but in contrast to the first patient, the responses of other hormones, TSH, bracteum, LH, FSH, and GH are all normal. MRI showed no enlargement of the pituitary. 
Based on these results, we diagnose this patient as isolated HCTH deficiency, and as a treatment, physiological dose of hydrocortisone was administered. Nivolumab therapy was restarted after hormone replacement. This is a summary of two types of pituitary IRAEs. One is multiple pituitary hormone deficiency with enlargement of pituitary, which could cause headache. And the second one is isolated HCTH deficiency without enlargement of pituitary. And this type of uh, disorder could be difficult to be diagnosed because a uh, patient with cancer sometimes uh, present fatigue or appetite loss, which could be similar to uh, HCTH deficiency. It is also of note that multiple pituitary hormone deficiency is induced by only CTLF4 antibody, while isolated HCTH deficiency can be induced by any ICI. This is a study showing the effect of low and high doses of glucocorticoid on the outcome of pituitary IRAs. In this study, the high doses of steroids was defined as a treatment with more than 30 mg per day of hydrocortisone for longer than seven days. As you can see, there was no significant difference in the frequency of resolution between groups. Actually, no patient showed the improvement of HCTH release. This is another study showing that Overall survival in pituitary IRA is patients treated with low and high doses of steroids. And uh, this study showed that low doses of spreadrinzolone showed better arrest. So we should not use high doses of steroid for the treatment of pituitary IRA. This is a clinical guideline for pituitary IRA. It's from the Japan Queen Society. Uh, physiological doses of hydrocortisone should be administered for HCTH deficiency, even if uh, the enlargement of pituitary could be detected. And restarting of ICIs can be considered after the general conditions are stabilized. This is the data from our prospective study showing the association of pituitary IRAs with overall survival. All patients with pituitary IRAs were treated with physiological doses of hydrocortisone. As shown here, OS uh, was better in patients with pituitary dysfunction than those without in both non uh, small cell lung cancer. I'm sorry. And malignant. Melanoma. So these data indicate that appropriate management for pituitary IRAs with physiological dose of hydrocortisone can contribute to the better prognosis of patients treated with ICIs. It would be nice if we could predict the risk of pituitary IRAs before the initiation of ICIs. We thought Anti-pituitary antibodies, APAs, might be a biomarker for pituitary IRAs. So we checked APAs at baseline and at the onset in five patients who developed multiple pituitary hormone deficiency, 17 patients who developed isolated HCTH deficiency, and in 40 patients as control. Our data showed 64.7% patients, 11 out of 17 patients, with isolated HCTH deficiency showed pituitary antibodies at baseline, suggesting that positive pituitary antibody at baseline could be a biomarker for, for isolated HCTH deficiency induced by ICIs. On the other hand, pituitary antibody were negative, 
in all patients who developed multiple pituitary hormone deficiency. However, positive changes of pituitary antibody were detected during ICI treatment in three out of four patients who developed multiple pituitary hormone deficiency. This slide showed pituitary cell targeted by pituitary antibodies at baseline and at the onset. Pituitary antibodies in patients with isolated ACTH deficiency recognized ACTH and FSH cells at baseline, and pituitary cells targeted by APA spread out at the onset. As all patients with pituitary IRAs show ACTH deficiency, pathogenic antigens may be expressed on cortical turfs, while further experiments are necessary to prove this. This slide showed HLA in patients with pituitary IRAs. While HLA alleles are overlapped to some extent among two types of pituitary dysfunction, they are not completely coincident. So this is a summary of pituitary IRAs. The incident of pituitary IRAs was 24% in CTLA-4 antibody treatment and 6% in PD-1 antibody treatment. There are two clinical types, multiple pituitary hormone deficiency and isolated ACTH deficiency. All patients with pituitary IRAs showed ACTH deficiency. Overall survival was better in patients with pituitary IRAs and positive pituitary antibody at baseline and positive changes of the antibody during ICI treatment could be a biomarker for this IRA. I'll move on to uh, thyroid dysfunction induced by ICIs. This slide showed the incidence of thyroid IRAs induced by each ICI regimen. The incidence was about 10% in PD-1 antibody and PD-L1 antibody treatment. While CTLA-4 antibody monotherapy did not cause thyroid IRAs, the incidence became much higher in a combination therapy of PD-1 antibody with CTLA-4 antibody compared to the monotherapy. Thyroid IRAs are classified into thyrotoxicosis and hypothyroidism. In general, thyrotoxicosis is either destructive thyroiditis or Graves' disease, as you know. In our prospective study, 21 out of 209 patients developed thyroid IRAs induced by PD-1 antibody. Most of them are either destructive thyroiditis or hypothyroidism. Graves' disease was quite rare. I will show a case who developed thyroid dysfunction induced by PD-1 antibody. The patient was a female in her 50s. She was diagnosed as lung adenocarcinoma and had surgical treatment. After the recurrence, she started the first PD-1 treatment, nivolumab. At that time, thyroid hormones were normal, but thyroglobulin antibody and TPO antibody were positive. Nine days after, she complained of a feeling of pressure on the the anterior neck and visit the emergency department. It could be difficult to see, but the thyroid was enlarged. You can see. Our laboratory data showed thyrotoxicosis and negative TSH receptor antibodies. And thyroid ultrasonography at the onset revealed a marked enlargement of the thyroid gland shown here. One month later, blood examination showed low levels of thyroid hormones. So she started the replacement therapy with T4. Our prospective study showed overall survival was better in patients with thyroid 
dysfunction than those without in non-small cell lung cancer, but not in malignant melanoma. This is a bit different uh, from pituitary IRA. So this is a clinical guideline for thyroid IRAs from the Japan Endocrine Society. As a treatment of thyroid toxicosis, beta broker is effective. In case of hypothyroidism, low doses of uh, T4 should be started. Efficiency of high doses of glucocorticoid is unclear. There is no evidence for that. Restarting ICIs can be considered after the general conditions are stabilized. To clarify the mechanisms of thyroid IRAs, we established a mouse model of destructive thyroiditis induced by PD-1 antibody. We induced thy uh, destructive thyroiditis in mice by the injection of PD-1 antibody following thyroglobin immunization. And our data showed that depletion of CD4 T cells completely prevented the development of destructive thyroiditis. As you can see here, the incident of thyroid IRA is induced by uh, nivolumab PD-1 antibody was significantly higher in the uh, antithyroid antibody positive groups than negative group, indicating that antithyroid antibodies at baseline is a biomarker for thyroid IRAs. We also clarified that irregular echo pattern at baseline was another risk for thyroid IRAE. The risk of a thyroid IRAE was higher in patients with thyroglobin antibody than those with TPO antibody. So thyroglobin antibody is a better biomarker. And the risk of a thyroid IRAE is in increased in PD-1 plus CTLF-4 combination antibodies therapy. And uh, thyroglobin antibody is also a risk marker in PD-L1 antibody treatment. This is a summary for thyroid IRAs. The incident of thyroid IRAs was about 10% in PD-1 and PD-L1 antibodies and 37 in combination therapy. There are mainly two clinical types, destructive thyroiditis and hypothyroidism. OS was better in patients with thyroid IRAs uh, in non-small cell lung cancers. Positivity of thyroid antibody at baseline, especially thyroglobin antibody is a biomarker. As a pathogenesis, cytotoxic CD4 T cells play an essential role in the development of destructive thyroiditis by PD-1 antibody. Thank you for your attention. Um, thank you, Professor Hiroshi. Uh, excellent talk, but in the interest of time, I'll request the audience that they keep questions with themselves. We have already overshooted time and they can ask uh, Professor Hiroshi questions later on. Thank you very much. And we, we move on. Thank you very much. We we'll request you to you take the certificate. the certificate, sir, from our chairs. Kindly see.